What's going on gang? Welcome back to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. You guys might not expect this from me because typically I'm running around with a bunch of Shimano's and high dollar reels. Over time I've kind of learned that you kind of pay for the reliability, the quality, things of that nature, right? But I can't relate with everybody because a lot of folks, like when I started and just getting into fishing, are buying the cheaper stuff. You want to see if this sport is right for you. And so anyways, we're doing something different today, y'all. We are at Shields, literally the largest all sports store in the country. I think when this place opened, it was 331,000 square feet if they haven't expanded any. But regardless, they should have a wide variety and selection of bait caster fishing reels. And so we are going to go shopping for the cheapest one we can find inside of Shields. We're going to do a little first impressions, test and review, talk about line, how to spool it up, how to set your drag, your tension, everything you need to know about maybe getting your first bait caster how to not get a backlash all these things I want this to be the most affordable option possible so if they don't have anything under like 50 bucks I'm gonna be unhappy but I think they've got something we're looking for and I'm throwing a curveball at you guys I really don't need this reel so I'm gonna give it away to one of you guys I've never hosted a giveaway on YouTube I've done a handful on Instagram if you're not following us over there give us a little follow we're closing in on a hundred thousand followers cannot thank you guys enough for all the support but over here on YouTube never done one so please just drop a comment below let me know why you should get this reel share this video with a friend let's get it out there to some folks who are newer to fishing give them an opportunity to win whatever reel it is I'm gonna purchase in here I'm gonna have it spooled up for you ready to go probably only able to ship it somewhere in the US I don't know how shipping is gonna work if it's out of country but guys drop those comments we're gonna give this thing away it will be announced in one of the next few videos I post so drop a comment do not delay and last but not least guys if we can get this video to 1,000 likes it will let me know you guys are looking for more budget-friendly videos and we might do like a cheapest comment video cheapest rod video whatever you guys want let me know down there below I'm gonna pick randomly one comment to get this reel probably within the next week or two so be looking out at the beginning of one of the next few videos let's go ahead and get in here <laughs> what's going on man good to see you I'm oh, giving him $200 to buy anything that he wants so mm -hmm. if he can keep the combo under 200 bucks he gets to keep it go ahead and check out that video on Tomboy's channel let's get upstairs and find these rod and reels Oh man, do they have the cheap stuff? We don't even know. This is the expensive stuff. Where's the affordable stuff? Here we go. Dude, limited stock out here today. Woo! People are buying this up. I kind of like this reel though. This one's pretty nice. Oh yeah! I got sidetracked. Look at all this greenery. Oh my gosh. Yeehaw! Play some video games up in here. Three dollars per play. Yo! Looking like kicking their bass in here. All right, y'all. Sorry, I got sidetracked. But look. We found what we needed, a bait caster under the $50 price tag, at least before tax. I think it's gonna go a little above afterwards, but Abu Garcia for life, you know the deal. <laughs> <laughs> I never use Abu Garcia, but we are gonna break it out today. I think you guys are absolutely gonna love it, and I can't wait to get this thing into one of y'all's hands. Drop those comments below, man. Let's get outside and get this thing spooled up, Torrance. What you say? <laughs> Okay, we have found a spot to spool the thing up, man. Checked out successfully, just over 50 bucks for this thing. And I'll tell you what, you can probably even find this reel a little bit cheaper on Amazon. I'll link it down in the description for you guys. We're going to break it out in an actual first use and review scenario today. And you can literally see straight to the bottom, probably three to five feet clarity. Let's go ahead and put some line on this thing. Dudes, what a beautiful backdrop. I like this place. First off, let's talk about this reel, Abu Garcia Black max they only had one left in stock and right-handed you guys probably know if you watch the channel regularly i usually fish with left-handed but i'm thinking about this giveaway though and how this is going to be one of y'all so i wanted to cater to the masses so i went with right-handed they only had a 6.4 to 1 gear ratio 6.4 to 1 means that the spool is turning 6.4 times for every full rotation of the handle. 7.2 to 1 is kind of like that mid-range and most popular, something along those lines. And then your high gear ratios could be somewhere approaching the 8s. But to be fair, you're not bringing in all that much more line with every full rotation. You know, if you think 6.2 full rotations to 7.2, you're talking about an inch or two depending on your spool size. So it says retrieve per turn is 26 inches. So I imagine if you had the 7.2 to 1, you'd be getting 28 inches or something like that. So don't get tripped up on your gear ratios whenever you're buying these things. But let's talk about this. It's got five bearings in it max drag is 18 pounds mono capacity is 145 yards at 12 pound and we're gonna put some different line on here I'll tell you all about it in a second let's break this thing out little unboxing for you guys how about that nice little foam on top all right also warranty card and here you go here's the reel 
black and red color scheme, I mean, it's gonna go with a lot of stuff. Magnetic braking right here, you got the switch on the side. We'll talk about setting that up as well as your drag and your uh, your tension. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and get this thing spooled up. I'm gonna put this on a Guggen Squad muscle rod. I wish I had the go-to. That is exactly what I'd recommend for you guys for all purpose. If you're just getting started, something like a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod is gonna be the best for everything across the board, your bottom baits, your moving baits. Holy FedEx. If you only had one rod, I would recommend something like a seven foot medium heavy. We've got it on our rod, which is the first step, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab our line. We've got a couple different line options today. We've got monofilament being the cheaper option and probably the way most guys will go getting started. This is 12 pound line, and then we have some fluorocarbon. It's a little bit more dense. It does sink, so it can be advantageous to certain baits. Monofilament actually floats. 15 pound fluorocarbon is what I would recommend for all purpose use, but today I might spool it up with the mono, just knowing that it is the cheaper option and something more people are gonna get started with. So let's go ahead and spool this thing up. So what you're gonna do when you get your bait caster and set it up on your rod for the first time is you are going to feed your line through the eyelets of your rod. Okay, so I have gone through all the eyelets on the rod. I have made sure to feed it through that eyelet on the reel and then I just tied a knot around the spool, leaving this tag end here for me to cut really quickly. Go ahead and chop that off, leaving just a little excess on there. One thing to note when you first start spooling up your bait caster is that you gotta check your drag and make sure it's cranked down. A lot of times the drag is completely off because that's the way to best store your reels for long-term storage. So for instance, right now I'm cranking and nothing's happening. That is because the drag isn't tightened. Let me go ahead and tighten that up. And now when I crank, the line actually feeds onto the spool and the spool turns. Okay, ladies and gents, here we go. We're gonna start cranking. Again, I'm keeping tension with my left hand, kind of pinching that line so that it goes onto the spool nice and tight. And I'm just gonna start cranking away until I fill that whole spool up with line. Watch how close I get it to the edge. You don't wanna overfill the spool. You wanna try and make sure that spool stays face up the entire time. Otherwise, you might get a little twist in the line and that's not gonna help with casting down the road. Okay guys, so there you go. You can see we have pretty much filled the spool all the way to the edge. We just left a little room right there. I'm excited to fish this thing. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a, a Kraken Crawl or a Bandito bug today. Okay guys, so everyone's probably got their bait of choice or confidence bait, but if you guys are new to fishing, a Texas rig is an absolute staple. I have a video on how to set up a Texas rig, but today's focus is primarily about the reel. So I'm gonna go ahead and rig this thing up right now and we'll just cut straight to the fishing and the test on the reel. You know what's funny is I put out the question on Instagram in the past on like what was your your first bait caster and a lot of people use the Abu Garcia Black Max as their first reel. It's just in that nice price range of under $50 you can find it in a lot of areas and for that price it gets the job done. I think more than 50% of the people who replied to that post on Instagram said the Abu Garcia Black Max was their first bait caster. Not only that but it seems to still be going strong for them till this day so that's pretty cool. A lot of these bait casters when they're brand new out of the box you're not going to notice all the differences between it and some of the more expensive reels on the market but what it really comes down to for me over time because I've fished reels in this price range and I'm just gonna be upfront about it, is a lot of them did not last and are broken in some way, shape, or form, which we'll talk about here in a minute as we fish. Let me get this bait ready. All right, about to make one of our first casts, but one of the first things you wanna do when you're setting up a new reel, especially if you're a beginner, I should say, because you can master your casting over time, is you wanna tighten up the tension knob until your bait drops slowly. That is gonna help you avoid a bird's nest or a backlash, whatever you wanna call it, where you get a knot in your line because you did not thumb that spool. So let's go ahead and drop this bait down. It's dropping really fast. I'm gonna tighten that up more, drop it down. Okay, let's crank it up a little bit. It seems to be taking its time. Okay, we're almost there. Crank it a little bit more. Now it feels locked. Wow, I'm kind of surprised, but the tension knob is like, like locked and the bait is still dropping fast. So maybe that is something to do with uh, the reel in this price range and maybe not, but I can promise you, I, this thing is tightened all the way down and I'm turning it the right direction, by the way. Um, does the drag work? <laughs> Yeah, the drag's tight, I locked that down too. Okay, well, we're just gonna roll with the punches and try not to get a backlash. Now, one of the things whenever you go to cast a bait caster for the first time is you wanna make sure you're smooth with that swing so that you don't get a bird's nest. You at least have the least potential of getting one. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my brakes on the max setting. You always wanna do that as well. That way you've got a, a lot of those brakes working with you to avoid a bird's nest. You're not gonna get as much casting distance out of it that way, but what you're gonna wanna do with every reel is you're gonna wanna make some casts, and of course you can change it up based on what you're throwing and how heavy it is, but you're gonna wanna make some casts 
and then you're gonna be like, okay, I didn't get a backlash, so then you might just kind of loosen it up a little bit, back off the brakes a couple notches, and cast again until you can get a happy medium of casting distance and not getting a bird's nest. Now, whether you're casting with the wind or into the wind is gonna make a big difference as well. Whenever you're casting into the wind, you definitely wanna max some things out, otherwise you are probably gonna get a bird's nest, and that can put a damper on your fishing plans for the day, and so we want to try and avoid those. So I've got the brakes pretty close to maxed out nice and smooth. I kind of kept my thumb on the spool that whole cast, just keeping it nice and easy since that tension knob doesn't seem to be working on this reel for some reason. I'm not going to talk too much trash because I'm giving it away to one of you guys and it is a quality piece of equipment. You're going to catch fish on it regardless, but I am kind of shocked as to why the tension knob is doing that. Now this is a Texas rig. I'm just kind of working it off the bottom, making it look like, making this bandito bug just look like a little creature popping along the bottom, crawfish or something like that. So that's how I'm working this bait. All in all, the reel's feeling very smooth and, and the tension knob doesn't bug me too much because of course I've been casting for a little while. So I've kind of got that smooth cast dialed in and then also as you learn to thumb that spool better, that tension won't have as much of an effect as when you're new. Let's scoot down the bank a little bit. Tell you what, it looks pretty good on this Guggen Gold Rod though. But if you guys are looking for that total budget all around combo, I'd say something like this reel right here with the Guggen Squad Green go-to rod that is gonna be your best bet let's try and really chunk this thing out here though let's see what we got here oh yeah she gets some distance that's on like that's still almost on max brakes right there Swedish engineered Abu Garcia okay okay come on bass don't let me down now we're trying to see if this drag works man come on give us a show I'm gonna go ahead and just take it down to like half See if I can get some more effortless distance. As soon as I go to cast it, I'm already feeling a little resistance. Those magnetic brakes are really cranked on this thing at about three quarters, at least with the bait that I'm throwing. So now really when you gotta start focusing on thumbing the spool is after your bait has kind of made like the apex in its cast, like as far as the height goes. The bait goes up with all that momentum as you cast out. And then as it's on that drop and that fall is when the spool is still spinning really fast, but your line starts coming off of there a little bit slower. So you need to kind of thumb it and slow it down. Otherwise that's when you'll get the backlash. So here we go on casting. Now I'm adding the thumb as it's on that drop. And I got much more distance that time because of the fact that I turned those brakes a little bit lower. And I could tell I was also the closest I've been yet to a bird's nest. Now, one thing here guys, is that I'm using 12 pound line. If you're using 15 or 17 pound line, you might not get the same amount of distance on these same settings. You're kind of playing with a lot of different variables. Here come some golfers. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. I'm gone for two seconds and they caught one over here. I'm just trying to get my food in, man. Eat every two hours. I'm on this new 2021 game plan. Bulk up, cause you know, yeah. Anyways, be sure to check out Pond Boy's video once again. He'll be down in the description. It's a good day. 2020, I don't even fish anymore. I just eat. I don't even fish anymore. All right, guys, we are wrapping things up at the house quite literally, taking the reel off of the rod, putting it in the box for one of you guys. I cannot wait for you to win it. All you gotta do is drop a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, it's gonna drop your chances of winning down to about 0%. So if you're a subscriber, that's a definite plus for you. With that, we have a lot more exciting content coming to you guys in 2021. Be on the lookout, hit the notifications bell, and hopefully we can do some more giveaways like this in the future. In fact, bigger and better ones. A lot of people talk about, I've seen recently, a lot of haters out there, man. Weston only does this stuff for views and Weston does some bragging and he's only about the money and it's like, dudes, if you realize, if you knew how much money I was making from YouTube, you wouldn't say that. I took a, a pay cut from my job that I quit back in March of last year so that I could pursue YouTube full time. And since then I've been at a loss, you know, like we bought the boat last year and that might have been like the total amount of money I made from YouTube the entire year. So just a little rant real fast. In the last quarter of 2020, CPM was really high. That's usually what happens uh, as advertisers spend more money on their ads on YouTubers' videos and stuff to get their products out there. So anytime I would get a video to a thousand views, that's about 10 bucks. If I hit 10K views, that's about a hundred dollars it would make. And I haven't had a video hit a hundred thousand views like ever. I've got like two videos that have done that in the past and it was before my channel was even monetized. So it's not like I made money off of those. Side note, I think last month I did like a 180,000 views. So you know 180 times 10 bucks or 180 times 750 is really like what I'm making per month with the views and that can fluctuate, right? Views go up some months, I do a couple good videos. Views go down some months, I suck. It's just what happens. But it's the start of a new year. The CPM is dropping as it usually does in the beginning. So I think at this very moment, I'm averaging like seven bucks and 50 cents per thousand views. So for this video to even pay for itself, I'd have to get like at least 10,000 views, right? I'd have to make like 75 bucks off of the AdSense just to cover the reel, the gas, the tolls, all those things of that nature. So usually I'm at a loss when I make these videos. I've been showcasing a 
lot more expensive gear lately because I want to show you guys something new and different and there's not many videos on a lot of the gear that I have been putting out lately. I'm just trying to share some insights with the real subs that are watching these videos till the end. I cannot thank you enough for that. But like even my few partnerships that I have outside of what YouTube earns me. So, you know, I'm with like two companies that I've been with for quite some time. It's not like I'm getting paid bukus from these guys. The money that I earn from those companies does not even cover the gas and toll bill every month that we get to go try and film these videos and fish new places for you guys. So I just want to put that into perspective. Everyone's saying, well, Weston's making all this money with YouTube so he can do all these things. Well, no, I'm at a loss basically every month with the money that I invest into the channel and that's fine because there's gonna come a day when we hit 100,000 views per video, 200,000 views per video, and what I'm making per month becomes what I'm making per day or per video. And so that's what we're looking forward to, guys. Hopefully this reel goes to somebody who ends up catching a gigantic bass on it. Drop some comments below. I'm gonna pick one at random within the next five uploads. It'll be right at the beginning of the video. Can't wait to see you on that one, guys. Peace out.